Oh, hey, here is another collection of uh, answers to questions that were asked on my personal website, www.tumblr.com slash dashboard. Uh, you know, I, if you want to listen to this whole thing, I recommend like playing it kind of in the background while, while you're doing some important uh, work. Because I think, you know, some, some of my answers are prob- probably like very uh, motivational or like inspirational. And, you know, that's why I post them on Tumblr.com because like, people are always uh, reblogging all kinds of inspirational things on there. Like just now I saw this animated gif of Tom Hiddlestones. That was pretty good. Oh, and and I, I pronounced it animated gif, but I know that technically the correct pronunciation is uh, janimated gif, but whatever, okay? Uh, anyways, here is the thing. Oh, here, the, this question uh, comes from the Royal Jetson Bombs. Uh, the, how do you feel about Furbies? TM. Yeah, those uh, Furbies are pretty cool. I mean, I always wanted to get one myself, but like, they were always uh, too expensive because they used like such amazing technologies from like Japan and stuff. So, so I, and I could not wait for the next generation of Furby. So what I did was I constructed my own Furby. But, but my one, my Furby is spelled uh, P-H-E-Y-R-E-B-B-I-E-Y-E. So, so you see, I, I, I changed a couple letters to distinguish my Furby from the other one. So clearly this Furby is my own creation. Uh, anyways, uh, I constructed it using, you know, just general uh, household items you can find around the fucking house. So for uh, starting with the eyeballs, I used like these couple of petrified eggs. And then I drew some nice very detailed uh, pupils on the on the middle of those eyeballs so the Furby can see it can stare at you all the time and then those eyeballs are like encased inside the the skull of a titanium endoskeleton which is then coated in like a nice layer of uh beard materials cuz those you know those beard materials have a lot of uses like in, in this case, it's keeping the Furby skeleton nice and warm. Uh, then, you know, all I had to do, I just had to, I gave him a mouse. I made that mouse out of fucking licorice. Uh, and then I just had to teach the Furby how to speak the common tongue, well, and which I did. So go, go ahead and speak, Furby. <laughs> Ah, oh, the Furby is, as he was saying, kiss me. He, uh, he wants me to give him a little peck on his fucking per- curved Furby cheek. No, it's not a Kirby cheek. Anyways, I'm not going to do that. I don't even know if it's a he. I mean, could be a she. Could be something else. I don't know how their biology works. I just made a skeleton and shit. I mean, it's probably not a he because uh, I I didn't make any Furby dicks. <laughs> Quiet down, Furby. Better do do boo 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 do 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 do. That was the theme song from Breaking Bad. Uh, here's an important question from M- Molly B. Dams. That's a cool name. Uh, who, who's your favorite character on Breaking Bad, the TV show? Um, my favorite character has gotta be that guy, Jesse Pinkman. Because his, his name, it, uh, it reminds me of an important time in my, in my life. When I was in a band called the Pinkman Group. And, uh, I, I call it a band, but, like, we, we didn't really... Uh, playing any music, any instruments, and I say we, but uh, I was I was the only actual member of the band. Uh, but basically, what we would do in the Pink Man group is uh, we 
we would like we paint ourselves pink and like throw throw like pink stuff at each other like uh strawberry milkshakes and uh pink marshmallows and other pink things like uh jiggly puffs the you know the pink pokemon aka the pinkemon um we'd also throw like merchandise from pinky and the brain as well as the spin-off series pinky Elmira and the Brain, but we don't we'd only like include the pinky stuff from the show. We wouldn't include any brains and certainly not any Elmiras. Oh, uh, what other pink stuff would we throw? Uh, you know, piggy banks and uh, strawberry flavored starbursts. R- really anything strawberry flavored, but. But not strawberries themselves, because, like, those aren't pink, those are red. Which is pretty weird that they make pink stuff out of the, out of the red uh, materials. I mean, if, if, if as Jimmy, Jimmy Seinfeld would say, uh, wha- what's the deal? Hey, Kramer, what's the deal? So yeah, uh, since I was the only actual member of the Pink Man group, I, I couldn't get anybody to throw that p- all that pink stuff at me, so I kind of just like throw it onto the floor and roll around in it. That was that was basically what the Pink Man group would do uh, every night on stage. And and by stage I mean like the floor of my bedroom. So so yeah, that's my favorite character. Oh, hey, here's a question from somebody with the name of Give me the boot here. That's their name. Uh they uh, do you play any video games? Uh, that's the question. Um, and yeah, sometimes uh, I do. Like I recently, I bought that new game, uh, Grand Theft Auto. But like I, I misread the the title of that game. I thought it was called Grandma Theft Auto. And and so like I thought it would be a good present for my grandma to play. Because she likes video games even more than I do. So I sent her this video game, which I believed, which I, th- I thought was called Grandma Theft Auto. And, but she did not appreciate it at all. In fact, <clears throat> excuse me, I have, I have her response r- right here that she mailed back to me. Let me just unfold this uh, letter from my grandma. It says, <clears throat> Dear grandson, I received your gift of this video game, Grand Theft Auto, and I have to say, you really fucked up this time. This, you know she's mad at me because she never uses the word uh, this time. Uh, she goes on to say, um, you sent me the PS3 version when I have an Xbox, so when I inserted the disc, it caused my Xbox machine to explode right in my grandma face. The explosion burned off all of my hair, so now I am BAF. And then in parentheses it says, bald as, well, you can guess the next word. Uh, P.S. You should call me soon, blah, blah, whatever. So yeah, that's... I don't know about video games anymore. They sound pretty dangerous. They should, they should all have like a warning uh, label on there that says, uh, "Caution: This game may explode in your grandma's face." They, they, and they should have these warnings take up like fifty, at least fifty-one percent of the cover space. So to make sure we all see it before we buy a video game for our grandma, just. For, for their protection. I don't want to burn any more grandma faces. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's just... I'm just talking about console games. Uh, you know, iPhone games are still pretty safe. I, I've been playing this game called Angry Birds. And those birds are fucking angry. I play it. I play it all the time when I'm, like, driving around. I just be driving and, and birding at the same time. And, like, sometimes... Like, I get so immersed in the world of angry birds that, like, I'll, I'll just slingshot one of them birds and it'll explode. 
And like, cause the game is so immersive, it's like I feel the vibrations of the explosion in my car seat. Like as if my car just hit something and, and rolled over it with all four wheels. It is that, it, that's how good that fucking game is. So, uh, I guess, so, so, uh, iPhone games are cool. Grandma exploding games are bad. Uh, thank you. All the one with the radiation eyes asked, What is your favorite part in the Three Ninjas movies? Um, okay, so for those who are not familiar with the Three Ninjas trilogy, uh, the Three Ninjas saga was about these uh, three kids who lack. Like, all of their parents die in like a bus crash or something. And then they are trained to become ninjas by a giant rat person in the sewers. And like, you know, obviously this person, uh, Radiation Eyes, is asking me about this movie. Because I think they must have heard that like, back in the 1990s, I auditioned for the role of Ninja Number 3 uh, in the movie. Yeah, back in back in those days, like in Hollywood, they they were like the only reason I didn't get the role in the movie is because they were like, hey, we don't want your kind in this movie. We don't. This is no orphans allowed. So get off of my Hollywood sign. Yeah, there was a lot of discrimination back in those days. So because I didn't get the role in the movie, I, and because of the the, the discrimination I, I endured. I decided to boycott the entire Three Ninjas saga, and I did not watch any of those movies. But I do remember the scene that I auditioned with, and it was it was probably my favorite. It would have been my favorite part of those movies anyway. They couldn't top this scene. Okay, what happened is there was like a bank heist going on. Some some dude was robbing a bank, and like the Three Ninjas come in. And the bank robber sees him and he's like, oh, that's that's just some fucking kids. I don't got to worry about them. But then the three ninja number one, he's like, worry about this. And he pulls out some throwing stars and he throws them right into the guy's eyeballs. And he's like, oh, my God, I can't see. But then ninja number two, he like throws some nunchucks at the guy's feet and it like ties up his his ankles together. So he's like, no, no, now not only can I not see, I also cannot walk. So then ninja number three, which would have been my character, he goes up with a katana blade and he, he slices the bank robber vertically in half and blood sprays all over the place, all over the bank. And then my character says this classic one-liner. Now that's what I call blood money. And that's how I would have delivered the line. So, you know, obviously I should have had that part. But, you know, I was impressed by the graphic violence they, they used in that scene, you know, in a PG-rated movie. But back then, you know, with, they, were, they could also get away with a lot more crazy shit in movies. So anyway, despite, like, uh, the, the people who made that movie being uh, kind of racist towards orphans... You know, it was still a pretty inspirational idea for a movie. You know, the idea that a kid could become a ninja. So I, I definitely wanted to be a ninja for a while after I read the script. Like, I, I went down to, into the sewers and, like, did some cartwheels. But I only lasted a couple days because I don't know if you've ever been in a sewer, but it's pretty gross. Like, no offense to anybody listening who lives in a sewer. I sh I'm sure you got, like, good acoustics down there the the sound waves probably bounce off of the sewerage pretty nicely but i i just i could not handle living down there like a ninja that's i think that's why the ninjas wear those uh, face covering things that like they go over their nose and mouth because they they try not to breathe in the sewerage fumes so much but if you want to be a ninja you you gotta you gotta be able to have the discipline to and to withstand the sewage. And you gotta listen to the rat people. Oh, if you wanna be a ninja, you gotta get with those rats. Oh, hey, so um, when I originally answered this question, um, 
my, to, about my favorite Disney movie, my answer was like, I just got so passionate in my answering that I spontaneously broke into song. And uh, some copyrighted music began to play in the background. It was, it was like a crazy supernatural occurrence. But anyways, I had to take that that song out and like I'll if you want to hear it, there's a link in the description. And uh you know what? There's also a link to the Moonface song cuz why not? I mean, if you're listening to an hour of me talking, you probably want to hear the song as well. I I really should learn to make my own kind of music like much like Mama Cass did. But, you know, whatever. Until that day, I will continue to steal other people's songs and sing over them and slightly alter the lyrics to make them about uh, moon faces. Okay, anyways, uh, oh, and, and if you just want to continue listening to this, basically my answer was that Aladdin is uh, my favorite Disney movie because uh, you can fly around on carpets and that is cool. And, and then I sang a song about carpet rides. Okay, bye. Oh, uh, hey, here is an anonymous question from an anonymous person. What Hogwarts house do you think you would be in? Um, okay, so first of all, for those who don't know, uh, Hogwarts is like a school for gifted youngsters where, like, kids go to learn how to use their special abilities. Uh, the, the Harry Potter series is basically like the British X-Men, but, you know, instead of Charles Xavier, this guy named Dumbledraws, and, like, instead of uh, being in a wheelchair, he's he's got a huge beard. And there's also, instead of Magneto, there's a guy named Snape Nito. Uh, so anyways, the only way to, to learn to figure out which Hogwarts house you're supposed to be in there's only two ways to to figure this information out and you know you either got to wear that magical talking hat or you got to take an online quiz on the internet.com and i don't i don't trust that talking hat i would i would not wear anything that has the ability to speak atop my head okay who knows what they would do to your brain. So I've got a quiz uh, right here on the internet.com. If you want to find it, just go to like internet.com slash uh, Hogwarts or something. Uh, okay, so question one of the quiz is if you could bring back memories with one smell, what would it be? Oh, that one, I, you know, I, I know the answer to this one. The smell that I would bring back uh, with memories would be the the smell of the freshly cut beard materials that I smelled the first time I, I sliced open one of those beard material dispensers that I used to have. Just the soft s smell of those beards coming out. It, it just, it was like a whole new world. But I already, I already sang that song. Uh, but that, that option is not on this quiz. Uh, for some reason, the the options that they give me on the quiz are the smell of a glorious pine forest, the smell of a roaring flame, the smell of the salty sea, and the smell of the fresh black earth. So I th I think the smell of a roaring flame is pretty close to what uh, those beard materials smell like. So I gotta I gotta go with that one. Click. Okay. Question number two. If you could represent one animal, what would it be? Um, well, that one's easy. You know, I think I, I kind of represent a bird because, you know, I just, I just like, I, I, I just want to soar so high up in the fucking bird sky. But, you know, unlike most birds, I cannot, I do not have the ability to fly. So, I guess that would make me like a penguin. I, I am a penguin. Give me some fishes! Yes, yeah, so I'm a penguin, but uh, once again, there's no penguin option on this quiz. The options they give me are a fox, a wolf, a dormouse, 
or an owl. Uh, I'm I'm not gonna be a dormouse, okay? I don't want no fucking door-sized mouse. That that's just that scares the the s out of me. Uh, and a wolf. I'm not a wolf, but uh, but sometimes I do kind of think that I'm hungry like the wolf. So I guess I would choose an owl because uh that that is a bird like a like a penguin. So that's pretty close actually. I get I've got to go with that one. Click. Question three. Which out of these is your favorite place to be? Okay, this time they are forcing me to choose from their options. So, uh, option one, in a large open field. Option two, in a forest where the sunlight filters through the thin branches. Uh, or three, a library. Option four, on a sunny path. So I gotta choose one of those four options. Um, I'm gonna rule out the large open field because that being in that kind of uh, place would just leave me open to all kinds of sniper attacks. So that's not good. Uh, I'll rule out a sunny path. I don't like that, that sunny being in there. I don't want that sun burning out my eyeballs again. Uh, and a, a forest would be pretty good, but like there's gonna be like bears and other wildlife running around. I don't want to have to deal with that stuff. So I gotta choose a library. You know, I could, I could read all those books and get all kinds of educations. Click. Question four. Let's say you could choose your soul mate. What would be the first thing you would look for in someone? Ah, oh, well, I think the first thing I look for would definitely be the size of her eyeballs. Because you got to watch out if... Somebody's eyeballs are too big, they are most likely a cartoon character and not a real living person. So you gotta, you gotta be wary of people who, whose eyeballs exceed a certain uh, radius or, or diameter, whichever word is the correct word. Uh, I don't know the exact uh, diameter of the, like, like the, the largest diameter that is acceptable for a human. I might make up a graph uh, to figure out the precise measurements, but for now, I'm just saying, uh, watch out for those big-eyed cartoon peoples. And of course, that option is not uh, on this quiz, so I'm just gonna go with uh, option four. Click. Now, this quiz is uh, pretty long, so I'm not gonna read every question, but also I'm not gonna read every question because I am noticing there are all kinds of uh, spelling and grammatical uh, mistakes in this thing and come on if you're gonna put something on the internet you gotta have some good spelling and grammars uh, s uh, skill abilities okay that otherwise I'm just gonna skip the next seven of your uh, quiz questions okay mr. Hogwarts quiz maker the, the you know I'll say one thing about that sorting hat he knows how to spell anyways I've, I've answered four of these questions that's got to be enough for them to calculate which Hogwarts house I will be in. So now I just got to click submit and find out the truth. The truth is in here, as Scully from the X-Men files would say. Oh my god. Oh my god, no. Congratulations on getting into... Ravenclaw? Get away from me, Ravenclaw! Get your Raven and Claws away from my gillyweeds! Save me, Double Draws! Oh, here's a question from Frosats. Uh, what is your most preferred midnight snack? Well, it's, it's funny you ask because, you know, every midnight, it... As it so happens, I like to eat an entire delicious cake. But, uh, because I, I'm not allowed into the kitchen after midnight, or actually, like, after 8 p.m., basically, like, when the sun goes down, I, I gotta stay out of the kitchen, or I'm in for a snitching. So what I do is I, I keep all of the ingredients for baking a cake inside my bedroom, like, underneath my mattress. I've got like all the cake materials. I got eggs, uh, flowers, 
of frostings, milks, you know, all of them. And then when it gets to midnight, I've start preparing the, the ingredients. I mix them all up inside my pillowcase. Uh, so yeah, I, I, after I mixed it up, then I just got to bake it underneath the, the nice glowing heat of my bedside lamp. And it, it takes about like five or six hours to bake the whole cake. But, but then I eat the whole thing and then I can get a couple hours sleep. And then I'm ready for breakfast. The most important meal of the day. And yes, yeah, sometimes the, the, the light bulb inside the lamp is not... It's not like hot enough to bake the cake all the way through. But then you can just drink the cake, which is actually better than eating it in many ways. Like it takes less time. You can like just drink the whole, just gulp it down. You know, I'd, I'd say like nine times out of ten, like I end up drinking the cake instead of eating it. But every morning I wake up feeling refreshed and rejuvenated. All thanks to my delicious cake shake. But, but also thanks to my grandpa, because it is he who locks the kitchen door every night and attaches electrodes to the doorknob. So, so if I even try to open the kitchen door, I will get a painful electric shock through my system. And by the way, in case you're wondering, if you get an electric shock, you, you do not see your own spooky skeleton through your skin, okay? That... Like, that happens in some cartoons, but it turns out it does not happen in real life. I'm, I must have touched that electrified doorknob like 30 or 60 times, and I, I never saw my skeleton. Oh, maybe one time I saw a couple of my leg ribs, but that was it. That's, other than that, I saw nothing. So remember, this Halloween, if you want to see a spooky skeleton, do not electrocute yourself, because there are better methods of seeing skeleton bones. That that is my Halloween safety tip for the year 2013. Now if you'll excuse me, it is almost 11.59, so I have to go and start preparing my cake materials so I can get, drink my delicious cake shake. Ah, oh, oh, today's question comes from somebody named Ataniyari. I think that's like some kind of Turkish name. Def it definitely originates from the Turkey people. Anyways, his question is, uh, did your grandpa kill any more animals or living things? And where is he now? Uh, okay, well, first of all, right now he, he's not here. He's on one of his uh, regular hunting trips. But because, yes, yeah, sometimes my grandpa goes hunting with his hunting license, which is legal, and you know he, he I guess he, he hunts animals. Okay, I may you know I may not like that he does that, but uh, like he always told me, it if you don't like the hunting, is the circle of life, my grandson, and if you don't like the circle of life, then that must mean you don't like the Lion King, and if you don't like the Lion King. You're probably a racist. You got a fucking problem with Simba? So anyway, yeah, he he goes and hunts animals and then eats them, I guess. Uh, but but you know, I I've never gone hunting with him. I mean, I I've almost went one time, but like on the car ride to the hunting zone, I like accidentally pointed my rifle at his face and pulled the trigger. And it's okay. He for a second I was like, "Oh my god, did I kill my grandpa?" Dun dun dun. But then he revealed that he was like, I knew you were going to fuck this up. So I, I, I've loaded your gun with blanks. And then, then he like kicked me out of the car and drove away. And I had to hitchhike all the way home in my brand new hunting clothes. But those hunting trips are the only time that my grandpa uses that gun. Okay, he, he's never killed any other living things. I think that was proven... Uh, during the trial, there, there there was no evidence to to ever back up those slanderous allegations. Okay, just just cause some of your pets go missing, that you don't have to go to your neighbor's house and be like, hey, you you don't have to accuse my grandpa of quote unquote killing and eating your guinea pigs. 
as as I told the jury when I was on that witness stand. The you guys cannot handle the truth because the truth is my grandpa was with me on that night in question when the guinea pigs went missing and he was cooking for me a delicious meal of mystery meats as he does every mystery meat Monday. So and so if the if the guinea pig skin does not fit, then you must acquit, your honor. C- case dismissed. And my testimony must have helped because my, he only went to jail for like 30 days. And if he had really killed those little guinea pigs, he probably would have gone. For, he would he would have gone to like Oz or something. And I'm talking about the the prison from that TV show Oz, not the fuck it, not the one with the yellow brick roads, and uh, the wicked witches. And the fucking cowardly tin man. Oh, if I only had a brain. That movie was crazy. Fucking flying monkeys. They can't fly in real life. You know you know how many monkey suicides there were? From them being like... They, they used to let monkeys watch that movie. And then those monkeys, they'd be like, Wow, look at those. I didn't know we could fly. I'm gonna imitate this media. Then they all jumped off buildings and... So many the monkey deaths. Uh, but but anyway, my grandpa was not responsible for any of those monkey deaths either. That's my that's my point. That my grandpa is innocent of all crimes, and case dismissed with prejudice, Your Honor. Dun 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 dun. dun. Bow 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 bow. Down. Hey, welcome back today on Tumblr.com/dashboard. Somebody named. Zucker Pepe 900 asked, um, if I had the chance to change something in history, what would I change with my powers? Um, I, my, the thing that I would change in history is that I would, I would make it so that the dinosaurs never were made to be extinct. Okay? The 69 million years ago, the, the dinosaurs were assassinated by the rise of the caveman and the cave woman. But I have a dream that, that someday dinosaur and human person could coexist and live in harmony as seen in the historical documents of the Flintstones. I mean, th- think about it. Why, why would you ever just walk to your car when you could simply jump out a window and slide down the tail of a brontosaurus into your car. And why, why, would, you, why would you record your phone messages onto a voicemail machine when you could simply have a, a speaking pterodactyl remember the messages and tell them to you with its beak? And why would you ride a horse when you could ride a Tyrannosaurus fucking Rex? Do 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 Jeff Goldblum. Actually, you know what? I take that back. The the third one. Those other things would be cool, but I I probably wouldn't be cool to ride a dinosaur. Uh, I don't think the dinosaurs would like that. I mean, I, I don't think horses like it either, by the way. I don't, I don't think it's cool that people ride horses in the year 2013. Maybe it was cool back in olden times, like before cars were invented, you know, back in the 60s. But now it is time, I think, to, to let the horses run free and return to their home planet. The tyranny of the jockey needs to end. Every day, we are all uh, preventing the horses from evolving by riding on their backs and crushing their vocal cords, uh, d- uh, delaying their, their, preventing them from learning how to speak. This fucking vocal cord damage has been going on since horses were invented, and it needs to stop or we'll, we'll never get another miracle like the famous Mr. Ed. The horse, no relation. You know, you know one thing that Mr. Ed Talking Horse never said. He he was never like, "Oh, I love people fucking riding on my back." 
Okay, because horses don't like that shit. They never did. And they especially don't like it now. And it's not just horses, okay? It's all of the horse-like creatures. Uh, I'm talking about donkeys, mules, uh, ponies, uh, pegasi, unicorns, and seahorses. Stop riding that seahorse, you little mermaid. You th j just because you don't have legs doesn't make it any easier on his back to carry you around with your fins and your scales. If you, if you weren't crushing his little seahorse vocal cords, he could learn how to sing just like that stupid French crab. There's lots of fucking horses under the sea. Uh, so, so yeah, dinosaurs. Oh, Anonymous asked, How do you feel about the new Batman game taking place on Christmas Eve? Uh, yeah, I, I think it is good uh, because the Batman has already fought, like, all these great villains, such as the Jokester and the uh, Kitty Woman and Penguin Face. But now he is, it is about time he is finally going to take on the ultimate evil. I mean, I, I haven't played through the whole game, but I'm assuming that the final boss fight will be between the Batman and uh, Santa Claus. So Santa Claus will finally be defeated by the most powerful orphan. Uh, Bat Batman's a way better orphan than, than Superman. At least he got like a cool, pretty cool adopted parents. Old Batman guy is some fucking old British guy. I mean, no offense to Alfred if he's listening. I mean, he's he's pretty cool. But yeah, Batman is gonna like use all of his orphan powers to to defeat Santa Claus. I can't wait to see him like just slice off all of that beard material with his batarangs. It's gonna be pretty good. I, I actually made my own batarangs in real life, but but I called but mine are called tutu rangs. They're, they're not as like fancy as ba as Batman's batarangs. Like I don't I don't have the uh, the technology that he has. I don't have like Wayne Tech uh, backing me or Morgan Freeman. I don't have any Morgan Freemans or I don't even have a, a British butlers. My butler is Spanish, but what I do have is an ample supply of tutu rangs that I built inside my tutu cave. And I will throw my tutu ranks at all the criminals in Gotham. I mean, hypothetically, I would do that, but I won't actually, I won't actually do it again in real life, cause uh, last time I threw a tutu rang at somebody, I, I kinda got arrested. And like, I, and, I, and as they were arresting me, I said to uh, the commissioner, I was like, C commissioner, you should put a tutu signal on the roof and then I will help you and he was and then he said shut the fuck up or I'll tase you again bitch and then and then I said don't tase me bro and it was pretty funny cuz like this this happened like eight years ago so that was a current reference at the time uh, if, it, if it happened today I would have said something like, I would have said something more appropriate like uh, uh, what hashtag Miley Cyrus or so, you know some shit like that whatever but anyway yeah I I can't wait to see uh, Batman fighting the fucking Santa Claus. I want it. He's going to have to use. This is going to be his like greatest, uh, most challenging fight yet. He's got to watch out. Here, I've got some tips for Batman, okay? You got you to gotta watch out for his uh, Rudolph beams. Like, here, here's what, here's what uh, Santa Claus's main attacks are. In his left hand... He he's got he carries around the severed head of Rudolph the red nosed reindeer. He like he attached the head to the end of his arm, like like you know like Ash did with a chainsaw in Evil Dead Two. But like and he like he shoots deadly laser beams out of the fucking uh, red nose. So you gotta watch out for those, Batman. He's gotta like use his dodging abilities to like flip around the room to dodge those laser beams. And uh, in his right hand, Santa Claus uh, carries a big, like, he carries, he's got, like, a gun that shoots snowballs. And uh, that, you don't have to worry about that so much, because, I mean, it's, it's literally just snow. I mean, who gives a shit? The, the Rudolph beams are, are what you got to watch out for. So, like, 
you know, eventually Santa Claus is going to get tired because he's the fat piece of shit. So he's going to like slow. He's going to stop shooting uh, Rudolph beams and he's going to be like, oh, my God, I'm sw I'm sweating so much. I want to eat something. I want give me some elves to eat. And that's that is Batman's time to strike. He's got to throw like 60 batarangs at Santa Claus fucking slicing off all of his beard materials. And then, well, Batman doesn't kill people. That is, that is a code of honor that he lives by. So he will, he will arrest Santa Claus, send him to Arkham Asylum. And, you know, I, I'm just saying, maybe, may, maybe on his way to prison, Santa Claus could uh, walk under some mistletoe, if you know what I mean. And instead of mis um, by mistletoe, I mean like a fucking poison mistletoe. I'm just saying, you know, Batman doesn't kill people, but that doesn't mean that there couldn't be some kind of little accident. Anyways, I gotta get back to my tutu cave and make some more tutu rangs. Because, you know, I've gotta stock up in case there's an emergency. Oh, oh hey, here's another mysterious question from Anonymous. If you could go to a moon, which moon would you go to, double question mark? Um, well, first of all, there, which moon I would go to? There was only one moon. There's only one official moon. And that is, that is fucking moon face. A.K.A. the Earth's moon, which I say in big old uh, finger in quotes, air quotes in the air. Okay, because, you know, the, the scientists have dubbed it Earth's moon. But, like, the, you can't, like, own the moon, okay, Earth? You can't. Hey, you, you hear me, astronauts? Buzz Aldrin? What, you, you think that you own the moon just because you stepped on its face? Well, well, by that logic, my grandpa owns me. And, and he don't own me, okay? You don't, he doesn't own me, and you don't own the moon. Buzz Aldrin, and Neil Armstrong, and, uh, Tom Hanks. You, none of you guys own the fucking moon face. You know what? I bet it was Buzz Aldrin. He was probably the one who took the, uh, moon face song off of YouTube. I mean, YouTube said it was blocked because I used the copyrighted Beatles song. Uh, but... But you know what? It's all part of the moon face conspiracy. People think the conspiracy is that, like, they didn't go to the moon at all. That it was a hoax. But the real conspiracy is that they went to the moon and they saw fucking moon face. And then they covered it up. They covered up moon face. Oh, little moon face. I, I see you up in the fucking sky. You know who else knew about moon face? Uh, that President JFK, you know, a few years before the moon landing, he, he was like, I, I do declare, I see a face on the moon, I have a dream, and they, you, you know what happened, they took him out. He was, he was Moonface's greatest ally in the 60s. So, uh, so anyway, to answer your question, I, I would, uh, I would, I would go to the moon, the main moon. And I would say hi to Moonface, and and I would drink Milky Ways out of the moon craters with a big silly moon straw. Oh, let me drink those moon shakes. Oh. Do 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 do. Here's another question from Cyber God, the God of Cyberspace. Um, if you could make your own gang, what would it be called, and what would your gang specialize in? Uh, thank you for that question. I, I don't think I would ever join a gang again after last time, because I was, I was in a gang back in the 90s, and, you know, we were pretty hardcore, our, our gang, you know, we protected our turf and stuff, um, our gang was called the greasers and what we specialized in uh every, what our get what we would do in the greasers is like every thursday uh we would meet and watch the movie grease on vhs tape so like 
you know, every Thursday we would go to blockbusting video and and one of us would, would rent the movie Grease on videotape. Then we would go and watch the video and it was pretty cool. Uh, but, you know, there were a lot of other gangs that sometimes would cause like gang wars and stuff. You know, there was a gang called uh, the Pulpers that they would watch the movie Pulp Fiction. Uh, there was a gang called the Facers. They would watch Face Off. Um, and there was the Shorties, who would watch Get Shorty. You know, basically any any time there was John Travolta was in a movie in the 90s, there would be a gang dedicated to watching that movie. But, uh, you know, there was th the worst gang war was the time, like, we were, watch we were just trying to watch Grease. And then, like, the, the Fevers were just happened to be to book the room next door to us so they could watch their movie Saturday Night Fever. They had the volume up so loud it was really rude. And you know, we were just trying to watch we're trying to watch this fun movie about some guy singing about his car and some girl singing about dropping out of beauty school and and like we, we gotta hear the this the volume of this movie next door about some guy on Saturday night getting a fever and like having non-consensual sex and then jumping off a bridge that that's not that's not summer loving that's not even winter loving so like one of the greasers uh, I think it was Jimmy the greaser he's like you know let's just go watch our movie somewhere else and I'm like no this come on Jimmy what would greasy do and Greasy was the main character in Greece. And Jimmy's like, you're right. Let's go over there and put a stop to this. So we go next door to the Fever's uh, territory. And uh, Jimmy the Greaser knocks on the door. And then the door swings open. And one of those fucking uh, Fever's pulls out a giant snitch blade and just cuts poor Jimmy's head off. In one swift motion, he fucking decapitates Jimmy. And then I'm like, holy shit! And the other guys run away, and I'm still, but I'm still like, oh my god, this is some crazy shit! And, and I, and then I look up at the guy holding the snitch blade, and I'm like, why did you do this to Jimmy? And I look at him, I look into his eyes, and I see that there is no humanity left in his soul, for he has been infected by Saturday Night Fever. And this was the most deadly fever back then. You know, this is before the outbreak of Bieber fever in the 2000s. And so, you know, I see there is no reasoning with this guy, so I'm, I just get the hell out of there. And, and, you know, after that night, the Greasers never really watched Grease again because... Well, it, Jimmy was the only one who had a, a VHS player, so, uh... And also, I think, like, all, all of those John Travolta gangs, like, they pretty much all, uh, broke up after that day. Uh, I, I think I still see a couple of Battlefield Earthers around, but that's about it. But, you know, Grease was a pretty cool movie, uh, so, you know, that's, that's my gang story. Um, and now, to finish up, I will sing... Jimmy the Greaser's favorite song in memory of his decapitated head. This one's for you, Jimmy the Greaser. Do 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 Greasy times. You got lots of grease And you got lightnings You can't see the grease in my hands Don't you know who I am? Do you remember my grease? Grease! I'm gonna grease forever I'm gonna learn how to grease Grease! I'm gonna grease all the mountains People will see me and cry Grease! I'm gonna grease up to heaven I'll light up the grease like a flame Grease! I'm gonna grease all the lightnings and people remember my grease. Oh, here's a question from somebody named Freaky. Uh, how many times 
have you watched the movie Unbreakable? Um, that's a good question. I think I only watched it like two times, like back when it was in theaters. I've I've never actually watched it again on DVD because like I don't I only need to see a movie once to like memorize all of its uh dialogues and scenes and stuff. But I saw this one twice because the the first time I went I saw it with my grandpa and he like fell asleep during the movie and his snoring was really loud and so he like and like also he like yells out movie spoilers in his sleep so that was pretty that kind of ruined the first screening but the second time i snuck out of the house and i saw it by myself so i that was I, then i was able to memorize the whole thing with my photographic memory oh yeah there was some cool scenes like like a spoiler alerts uh the the opening scene of the movie <clears throat> the opening scene is like there's this uh, little baby it's like it starts it starts off like a hundred years ago back in the 60s and like there's some baby that is crying and there's a bunch of people standing around and they're like somebody needs to stop this crying baby i'm trying to sleep here in the 60s so the doctor comes over and he like looks at the baby and he's like my diagnosis is that this is fucked up um and the mom's like what are you talking about and then he explains this all of this baby's bones are broken. Uh, out of all the babies I have seen in my professional c career as a doctor, this one truly is the most breakable. And then, boom, it, it cuts to the opening title, Unbreakable. And, and right away, you're like, what? This, this baby is, is, is broken, but the movie is called Unbreakable? Like, what? they're one minute in. And we are already seeing one of these classic Sha Shia Melanic twists I've heard so much about. So then, like, there's some other cool scenes, like Bruce Willis. He, he's in a he's in like a big train crash, and everybody on the train dies except for him. He's the only survivor. And like, then he goes to a comic book store. Like, he's gonna buy like a new issue of X Men or something. And he meets Samuel Jackson. And and Samuel Jackson is like. Hey, I, I recognize you. You are Bruce Willis. I saw you on the news. You you were in that train crash and you survived because you are unbreakable. Perhaps you, you are like one of these superheroes in this comic book, Bruce Willis. You ha Have you ever heard of the Avengers Initiative? But Bruce Willis, he's still like in denial about his special powers. So he's like, fuck you, Samuel L. Jackson. And he like kicks him in the shin. And because his bones are really brittle, his shin just like snaps in half. And then later, uh, Bruce Willis is at home, and his son, Bruce Willis Jr., uh, BJ, he, he like he he's like all pissed off because his dad won't admit that he is unbreakable. So he like he gets a gun. Okay, this is intense. He gets a gun. He points it at Bruce Willis, and he's like, "I'm gonna shoot you with this gun, Dad." Then the bullet is gonna bounce off you and that'll prove that you are unbreakable. But Bruce Willis is like, yo, if you shoot me with that gun, it's like, you remember the old saying, I'm rubber and you are glue. So the bullet's gonna bounce off me and stick to you. So the kid's like, oh shit, that's, that's right. So he doesn't shoot him. But that this, like, this uh, motivates Bruce Willis to go back and see Samuel Jackson and like actually train he tra he does like a training montage with him where they're like running on the beach and the uh, punching things and like eventually he he uses his special powers to track down some guy who like kidnapped this family and he goes in there and he's like I'm going to stop you cuz I am unbreakable but the the bad guy he like kicks he pushes Bruce Willis out a window or something and he lands in a swimming pool and Bruce Willis is, he's like, oh my god, the, my one weakness is the, the water in this pool. Because I think this is like, I think the implication is that Bruce Willis is connected to uh, the aliens from Signs, who were also, uh, their weakness was water. So, may, so maybe Bruce Willis is like part alien. I, I think if you, if you look at Signs and you freeze frame on the aliens, you, you can see that kind of look. Like Bruce Willis, 
But uh, this is like, I don't think Shyamalan Jackson has ever confirmed these theories. But anyways, Bruce Willis is in the swimming pool. He's like, oh my God, I can't swim. What am I going to do? But then he has like a flashback. He, he remembers many years ago that he, with the time that he trained with an ancient Japanese wizard man who taught him the, the arts of, of punching through swimming pools. So then he uses uh, this knowledge back in present times. He punches his way out of the swimming pool and escapes. And it saves the family. And then he, then, he's, he's, then he goes home. And the kid's like, oh, look, it's my dad. Fuck you, dad. And then, but Bruce Willis is like, oh, yeah? Take a look at this newspaper. And the newspaper says, a mysterious, unbreakable man saves family. And then the kid's like, oh, I guess you are pretty cool, dad. So, so then later, Bruce Willis, he goes back and sees Samuel Jackson. And he's like, yo, thanks for teaching me how to use my powers, Samuel Jackson. You're the best. You're, you are a true friend. Let us shake hands for the first time. So then they shake hands, right? And by doing this, like Bruce Willis's psychic powers activate. Because by the way, he has psychic powers. I don't think I mentioned that before. But his psychic powers activate and he sees the truth about Samuel Jackson. That it was he who, who crashed the train in the beginning of the movie and started the whole thing. And, he, and, and Samuel Jackson is right. That's, that is true. They called me Mr. Glass. And then the, the t- real twist is revealed that Samuel Jackson, a.k.a. Mr. Glass, w- was a ghost the whole time. It's, it was a fucking crazy twist. So anyway, that's the end of the movie. Then like that, the, the end credits uh, play and like that cool, that unbreakable theme song kicks in. Yo, I'm the breakable. Do, 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 Mr. Glass is in a, in a, his padded cell in, in Arkham Asylum. And he's like, You may have defeated me this time, Bruce Willis, but I will be back for revenge. I, I will return in Unbreakable 2. Break dance. That I will return and I will challenge Bruce Willis to a break dancing contest. Do 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 do